Hey everybody, Model Man here and on the bench for May 1st, 2014 with this about to hit 100%. That means I can start putting all of my video files and the other stuff back on to this brand new 12 terabyte RAID 5 that I've got going on here. I was running out of space with what I had. 11 terabytes is definitely going to give me a little room. And speaking of room, this place has been a mess for the last couple weeks while I worked on a secret project, which is right up there next to Godzilla. And that's about the best I can really show it to you until hopefully I'll be able to reveal more by June or July. We'll see how it goes. But getting this place cleaned up was a real critical thing that I had to do. And as you can see, the Jupiter 2 is ready to go. I've got some sequencers here. Got that there, got the rest of the model over there, got things sorted up there. Oh, yeah, and I also and I also did just a little bit of rearranging. There's a little more room here in this area now, just a little. I think since the last bench update, that is new. The old one is gone here. This was here, but those guys have moved around, and that is new, and this is new, and yeah, I guess there's, and of course, this is a new position. Basically, everything got some real fine-tuning going on, including my on-the-bench workboard. It wasn't really visually distinct enough where things were at with little X's and crosses, so I decided to add some red and some green. Green means that particular thing, whether it's assembly, putty, surfacing, lights and fiber, primer, paint, is in progress, or was left in progress the last time I worked on this model, or red for the stage out of 11 stages is complete. And I also got rid of a couple models that had only gone through the wash and prep phase, so clear this out wanted to get rid of them, moved everything up in the list, and re-notated everything. And the Jupiter, getting the... I had a uh, last full test fit of the outer hull and the inside pieces here, and there is a slight little bit of a fit problem that I was still trying to work out when I put this down for a little while to work on this chunky Fancy Feast secret project. Getting back to this though, Fitting the soffit on top here was actually really difficult and I had to pull and squish and really stretch the pieces into place to get as good a fit as I just did. I don't know that I'll need to glue it into place, I don't think I will. And once uh, this back room is all set and that can get knocked in, this can get locked up and so on. I'm just about definitely going to pull all these old LEDs off here and just put a single strip of LED tape going around. Uh, the entire perimeter pointing outward so the light bounces back in from the ceiling. But other than that, I am ready to get back to this. And over here on the paint booth, one serious thing I need to do is take the uh, orbital sander I've got down there and do these inside walls. This is actually an anti-static piece of fabric. I was hoping that maybe this can catch some dust and debris that's going on while I'm painting. So I've got some of those and I'm going to put them up the next time I do painting. But the wall here is really rough and pebbly from all the uh, paint spray that's going on. Even here there's whole dust bunnies just sitting on the wall right there. So I've determined that one of my major problems when I'm painting is getting dust in there and it's because of a situation like this. So every time before I paint I have to go and totally clean this out to make sure that I'm working with the best possible uh, situation that I can. And of course, replacing this fan with a proper fan. I've been looking at that. That's about 120 bucks or so to get the size of fan that I want that's uh, out of the Airstream. And uh, that's for down the road sometime. Other than that, rearranging everything. Uh, this whole area is now set up new, this whole area is set up new, that's new, this whole situation up here is new, fiber optics are back where they belong, Modeler's brand is all stuck inside behind this wall now. And so after nearly three years of being here I can finally say there's a place for everything and everything is finally 
in its place. And I can't wait to get the Jupiter 2 out of here because uh, I want to get back to working on some of these other models and some of these models up here. I shot a review of the Cylon Raider. I'll be doing that soon. I had it side by side with the 30th anniversary version and I pulled out some of these other Vipers in pieces. I tried doing a review of the robot and the original footage went corrupt. I tried a few more times to review, do reviews and those just went nowhere and I kept resealing the bags after every time I did it and just become became a tedious mess. So before I build that model, I'll do a review then. And it's going to sit here until then. It's, not, it's really great that Mobius did that though and I'm very happy. I'm also happy with the Cylon uh, for all of its really wonderful benefits and the very few nitpicking piddly stuff uh, that goes along with it. It's really wonderful to have that size and to have the Viper in scale with it at long last. There's talk that they're going to do a 172 Viper, which would just about go with the original Cylon Raider. And of course, don't discount the original Cylon Raider because that was used on screen in the show, so technically it's accurate. As accurate as the old AMT 1701 was for being the Constellation in Doomsday Machine. And over here, I'm really hankering to build this full stack. And, uh... I wish I had some time and some room because this is going to be a big, big model. One thing I did just do was go through all the different shuttles, how I might display them, what kit I would use for that, and so on. So building a full stack 172, that's going to be Endeavor, as seen here in town at the LA Science Center when they eventually stand it up on its boosters and uh, have walkways all around it. So for that apart from building the model itself, I'd like to build just a limited section of the Science Center display area. Then of course, for Atlantis, there's something nice in that there's a 1144th Mir kit from Revel, and Atlantis was one of the only shuttles to visit Mir, so I think I'm going to do that. There is no 1144 space station, otherwise I would have done that. Discovery, it had the most interaction with Hubble, so I'm going to do that on orbit launching Hubble. Challenger, I'm going to do that landing at Edwards, its last flight. Columbia, STS-1, the engine's firing, it's like 30 feet off of the launch pad, it's a beautiful photo of it, and I want to do that in 144. Then Enterprise, I have a 747 orbiter right up there in that USPS uh, priority box and uh, I'll do that on its final test flight just as it's separating from the 747. So those are my display ideas. I'd like to get to them definitely before the end of 2014. Don't get me wrong there. And so the sooner I can get the Jupiter out of here the happier I'm really gonna be. Uh, there's a lot of fiber optics coming up there's some more sequencer work coming up. There's plenty of room underneath the model for a lot more lights and everything. So, And of course, setting up this uh, 12 terabyte, 11 formatted terabyte uh, RAID 5 has just taken like four or five days just to initialize and format it. So it's going to take me even more days to move all my five terabytes of data back onto it. So, with that being the case, it's going to be a few more days before I really get any video going on. Let's face it, it'll be a couple weeks, probably going into mid-May or so, uh, hopefully early 3rd of May at the very least. So, uh, thanks for staying tuned, thanks for watching, I've got some really good ideas coming up for the summer, and uh, I'll see you soon. See ya. And here are a few YouTube channels that might interest you. As always, the Scale Model Addict. Scott Gervan brings you his own work and the Scale Model Addict Forum and Scale Model Addict Magazine. Dr. Faust's The Painting Clinic. Check out Tony for miniatures and model painting. What time is it? It's Cranky Time. With his lab rat Ori assistant Igor, Dr. Cranky brings you the best in rats, rods, and rust. Steve Neal's Garage with Rosie the Wonder Dog, Mary, and Xena, featuring feature film props, restorations, and scale model artistry.
Scott Alexander of Atomic City Models, specializing in 2001 A Space Odyssey model recreations and a few other notable genre pieces as well. Braddock 001, whether a one-to-one -one scale Borg sleep station, droids of any make or model, or even popular superhero armor or any kind of sculpture, look to Brad Carpenter to bring it. And for the trials, tribulations, and tales of my car Red 2 and its droid lemons, check in on Gears McTinkerson. Bad Grendel's for fine model work, timer chips, and electronics knowledge. The Model Man Tom channel would like to thank the following for their sponsorship. Elliot Brown of Kingston Vacuum Works, featuring Fedoratron.com and WarmPlastic.com. Lighting for extraordinary modelers and vacuum forming tables for designers, modelers, and engineers. Kingston Vacuum Works covers it all. Paul at TheFiberOpticStore.com, now presenting the beta version of its new site, TheFiberOpticProjects.com, for an exceptional selection and great prices of fiber optics of all sizes and quantities, TheFiberOpticStore.com. Carpenter Creations, if you can dream it, you can make it. Brad and Carpenter, science fiction artiste. From full scale board cubicles or droid displays of all kinds, Carpenter Creations. Steve Neal's Garage, props and models for motion picture and discerning collectors, as well as prosthetic makeup and CG. Contact Steve through stevenealsgarage.com. Model reviews from Round 2 Models AMT, MPC, Polar Lights, and Lindbergh. Scale Model Attic Magazine. Issue 3 now available. Issue number 4 is in the works. The Orbital Defense Engineering Commission, a 2001 A Space Odyssey specific forum for scale model kits, reviews, news, and discussion. Bodec.proboards.com. More than just talk, hobbytalk.com. Forum for every hobby. And for the finest reference collection of feature film studio props and miniatures and models, Modelers Miniatures and Magic at ModelerMagic.com.